your praise from my heart to your ears. All the glory is yours now forevermore. Here I worship all we can give it for you. We're here for you.
hard pressed on each side we will not lose sight of the one who's greater one name one name holds every victory one voice that silences the enemy one king
It says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Everybody say, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I want to preach to you for a few minutes with the help of the Lord about the perfect church. The perfect church. Lord, we thank you for what we feel in this house, for your presence that is here. I thank you, Lord, for the lives that are being transformed and touched and impacted already in this service. And I pray and ask that your anointing be upon your messenger today. I am but a man and I need your strength and your help. And I ask, Lord, for your spirit to strengthen and to help me convey that which you have given me to say to this great body of people today and watching online. Uh, Lord, I pray let it be clear and concise and understood in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. You know, we tend to be competitive shoppers. I don't know if you know that or not. Some of you husbands could say amen. That uh, you know somebody who is a competitive shopper. We look for what pleases us. And if we don't, if they don't have it, if we don't like how they respond, if we don't like something about it, we just go somewhere else. Some people try to uh, do that with churches. You know, if your dry cleaner disappointed you, you just change, get a new dry cleaner. Again, some people try to do that with churches. If I get upset about something, I'll just look for another one. There's plenty. Now, y'all relax, okay? I'm not going to hammer us all day. I'll compare and evaluate and decide which best serves me rather than how I can serve the church. That's kind of the mentality we have to fight in our culture these days. And it's easy for that attitude to get into the church. There's a quest to find in each and every person the perfect church. You know, it's a, it's, I call it Goldilocks Christianity. Well, this one is too loud. Well, this one is too quiet. This one's just right. <laughs> Looking for the perfect church. Now, I would like to tell you today that there is just such a perfect church. It is faultless. It is without any blemish. It is ideal. It is flawless. It is unspoiled. This church is complete. It's whole. It's absolute. 
I'd like to point you to the perfect church. You might say, my goodness, preacher, you're rather vain, aren't you? To believe that this church is perfect? I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean this church. I didn't mean this congregation. We're not perfect. I think this is a great church. It's an amazing church, but it's not a perfect church. You're surrounded today by a whole collection of flawed, wounded, and blemished people. We're not everything we ought to be. Please don't for one second think that you don't fit here because you're not good enough. If all our dirty laundry were aired, there wouldn't be a face here that wasn't blushing. And if you're saying, mm -mm, not me, you're exactly the one I'm talking about. <laughs> right? We are not ever, we are not perfect. I'm not making excuses for our sins. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. For we are called to daily repent and seek after holiness. Right? So I'm not excusing sin. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But we're not perfect. We're not perfect. I am saying that we better remember, however, and we ought to know that everyone who sings here today is a sinner saved by the grace of God. Each musician is a sinner saved by the grace of God. This preacher is a sinner saved by the grace of God. Every door greeter is a sinner that was saved by the grace of God. Our sound and media and production and our Sunday school teachers were sinners saved by the grace of God. Doesn't that make some of you feel better? Everybody that's singing or visible or that's not that's working was a sinner saved. Everybody in this building is a sinner saved by the grace of God. We're not perfect. We're not perfect by any means. This church is not perfect because you and I are here. And we're not perfect. If you should find the perfect church without fault or smear, please don't ever join that church because you'll spoil the atmosphere. <laughs> Ephesians 4, chapter 11, verse 13. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of of Christ there's only one that's perfect right we're not there yet we're, we're we are on a journey we are traveling towards him we're we're striving to be like him we're getting nearer to him hopefully each and every day collectively we're learning we're growing we're maturing we're becoming I hope that's the case about us we should be doing that but we're not there yet we still have a long way to go to be like the Lord. If you don't believe me, just let somebody cut you off in traffic. And see how you respond. <sighs> yeah. Some of you are like, I don't know what he's talking about. Have y'all, this is a side note, but... <laughs> Have y'all ever um, been in a hurry to get to church and you cut somebody off only to realize it's somebody that pulls in right behind you? And you're like, oh, God. Yeah, try being the pastor when that happens, all right? That's real great. I'm like, oh, hi, nice to have you today. God bless you. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Did you flip me off? I can't remember. It's okay, we're imperfect. <laughs> oh, goodness. Y'all can tell I've been on vacation, right? Much more relaxed. But collectively, we should be striving 
yearning, seeking to be like God. But without this, this pressure to have to be perfect because we're never going to be. We're not God. Uh, we, we may all be at different stages of the process, but all of us, all of us should be advancing. All of us should be growing. All of us are, 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 are getting closer to Christ. Perfect, no. And if we presented that image to anybody, if I ever have, if anybody in this church ever has, please forgive us for our pride. That's just one more fault. I throw myself on his mercy each and every day. I do. Is anybody else? I do. Every day. But you're the preacher. You're a Christian. But you're a preacher and a Christian. I'm not nearly what you are. Oh, oh. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Anything I'm becoming is because of him. Anything. Anything I'm becoming is because of him, good people. Anything I'm developing into is because of him. I'm a man just like you're a man. Brother Tino, I'm just a man. I, I love this. There was a sweet, precious little child in this church that for years she thought I was Jesus. <laughs> Whew. I was like, uh, no, 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 no. No, sorry to disappoint you. But I'm just a man. I fall, I struggle, I fail, I mess up. Anybody else? Thank y'all. Making me feel a little better. But I come back, you know, when I do those, I come back to the altar. I come back to the cross. I come back to the fountain of God's grace and mercy. I come back to his never-ending love. I come back... come back, back to the blood that was shed for my sin. I come back to that over and over again because I'm not perfect, but when I fail, I know where to run. Woo. And in, in time after time after time after time, he picks me up. He hugs me again and he says, okay, all right, bud. Let's try this one more time. This is not a perfect church. So imperfect people are welcome here. Isn't that good news? Imperfect people are welcome at this place. What I'd like you to know is that you fit in here if you're imperfect. But I'm not what you think I am. We're not what you think we are. But I've got some baggage. I've made some mistakes. I've got some scars. I've failed in many, 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 many ways, preacher. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Come on. Welcome to the church. Welcome. We've all got the story. We know all the verses to the song. This is not a place you'll be looked down on. And if you are, they need Jesus. <laughs> you'll never be criticized for your past here because everybody's got a past. You'll only be loved today and encouraged about tomorrow because there's hope for your tomorrow. It's in the perfect man, Christ Jesus. Woo! Come on, somebody. Welcome to the church. I said welcome to the church. We're glad you're here. You say, but I don't fit in. Yes, you do fit in here. But I've made mistakes. We have too. But by the grace of God, we're here worshiping. By the grace of God, we're able to enjoy his presence. Together. Welcome to the church. When Jesus was dying on the cross, an interesting series of events occurs. Nearly all the voices there that day were mocking him, right? You remember the story? With ridicule, calling him king of the Jews, 
What are you going to do now? Challenging him to deliver himself from the cross. He saved others, but he can't save himself for the jeers. The voices came from the soldiers, from the religious powers of the day, and then even from one of his fellow condemned criminals, Luke 23, 39, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Even through that torment, another of the men there found it in him to rail on Jesus uniquely. The other, though, next to him, condemned this man's perspective. And he came to Christ's defense in Luke 23, 40 through 42. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou, dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive, and we indeed justly, he said, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. We deserve it. But this man hath done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou come into your kingdom. He makes a request. He throws a hand up for help. And without hesitation, Jesus reaches out for that hand. Certainly this man was not a stellar candidate. He didn't bring any kind of resume. He, he had not accomplishments of which to be proud of. He was a condemned criminal, a thief, a violent and unrighteous man caught and condemned by the justice system. He had no one there weeping for him that day. Society was glad to be rid of him. Just another failed life that was being swept away. Surely Christ would not have time for him. Surely the kingdom of God is no place for him. Surely Jesus will say thanks, but no thanks. You're not exactly the kind of person I have in mind. Surely Jesus can do better than a condemned criminal, but here is his response in Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amazing, isn't it? Jesus immediately says, sure, come on. You're welcome here. I'm glad to have you with me. No accusations, no finger pointing, no you really messed your life up conversations. Just the gentle voice of a suffering Savior who was perfect and without blame, who offers access into paradise for one who was less than perfect. I know a little bit about that. Does anybody else? I remember what he did for me. I remember when he did that for me. I remember when I had no claim on mercy, but he gave me mercy anyway. I remember the day when he said... I remember the day when Jesus said, oh yeah, you've messed up. Yes, yes, you've done these things. And I remember when I said, I've blown it. I deserve exactly what I'm getting, but please, please, will you remember me? Jesus, please, will you remember me? And in a moment, in an instant, I felt his grace. I felt his mercy. I felt his love. I felt his arms wrap around me and say, oh yeah, yes, yes, you're exactly what I'm looking for. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything right. You don't have to have everything together. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In an instant, he forgave my sins. I was baptized in his name, and the record of my sins was gone. Does anybody else remember the feeling of when you went down in a watery, watery grave of baptism and when you came up? That weight had been lifted. That burden had been broken. That sin had been washed and removed from your life. Does anybody remember what God, what Christ, come on. Does anybody remember what he did for you on that day when you experienced salvation? And maybe you haven't yet. And maybe you think you don't deserve it. But you hear this preacher on this Sunday. You're exactly the candidate he's looking for. He has exactly come into this place to tell somebody. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it 
all together. All you have to do is come to me and ask. Oh, he filled me with his spirit. I can never forget. I will never forget the moment that he filled me with his spirit. It was like a surge, an energy, a power came into my being, into my body. And I felt like electric bolts flying out of my hands as they were raised to God. And I felt something I have never felt before. And from that day on, I have walked with a power in Christ that I never thought I would ever have. I have walked and experienced things that I never thought. I would ever see or experience why because I'm perfect no but because I'm imperfect and I said I need you he responded to me does anybody know what I'm talking about is there a witness in this house that knows you're a witness and a testimony that you know and understand what I'm preaching about do you remember what Christ did for you was it because you were perfect no, quite the opposite. Did it just happen automatically? No, I had to ask. But as soon as I did, as soon as I said, Jesus, forgive me, I've made a mess of it. Oh, I've, I, I've messed up. I, I, I've done stuff that he said, okay, I hear you. You're not alone. I'm with you. anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, preacher, yes, I'm imperfect. Yes, we're imperfect. But there's a perfect God who will never leave us or forsake us or fail us. I was not perfect, and yet I fit right in. Anybody else feel like you fit in to the church? That wasn't a very resounding amen. I'm a little worried. I'll keep preaching then. But there is a perfect church. Where is it? Have you been there? No. But I am a part of it. Oh, it's not incorporated in this state or any other state. It doesn't have a 501c3. You can't find an address at which it all meets. It is known as the church of Jesus Christ. It is a worldwide church. It has members from every land. Revelation 5, 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation it is a worshiping church it is worshiping all around the globe today you can't join this church there's no class to attend no membership card to fill out you have to be born into this church but we've all been given opportunity to be born into this church he will not turn you away if you ask him he will not reject you if you seek for it he will welcome you with open arms all you have to do is repent be baptized in the name of Jesus Acts 2 38. Go read it. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You say, oh, oh, oh you have to be born into it, so I'm, not, I'm from the wrong family. I can't, I can't get in. No, no, it doesn't matter, your earthly family. You have, to be, you, you have to be born again to get in the church, but it's not of the earthly thing. Jesus called it being born of water and of the Spirit in John chapter 3. 
the Bible refers to being adopted into his family. No matter your background, no matter your mistakes, no matter your failures, no matter your regrets and your scars and your mess ups and your hang ups, he welcomes you into not a church, but the church. It's a perfect church. It's with. Oh. Y'all not getting it yet. I said it's a perfect church. It's not, it's not of this address. It's of another address. It's a perfect church. Anybody want to be a part? Does anybody want to be a part of the perfect church of Jesus Christ? Woo! <laughs> First Peter 2.10. Some of you new folks are going, that guy is crazy. <laughs> I'm not perfect, sorry. <laughs> which in time past, watch this, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This church, his church is perfect. You, but you don't have to be perfect to get in. Isn't that cool? When you get in, he'll make you perfect. You say, what? But you said, I can't be perfect. Hang on. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Doesn't mean you'll never mess up. But it means you have perfect standing before him. Oh, Oh, so you come with all your dirty rags, all your spiritual clothes stained by sin. <laughs> you are soiled, you are guilty, you're unfit. It's okay. Come on. And he'll clean you up and he'll put a new robe on you, a robe of righteousness, his righteousness. I said he'll put a new garment on you. He'll put a new robe on you of righteousness. His righteousness. His righteousness. Come on. I don't know where you're at today, but what I do know is you don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is come to him and he'll put on a robe of righteousness <laughs> upon you. Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Oh, when I came to the church, he took my sins on him and put his righteousness on me. Yeah, you're not getting it. Um, come here, Jay. You help me out. This is a simple illustration, but you know, I just want to make sure everybody's good and gets this. Because y'all didn't really I, say amen like I was hoping for. <laughs> Will you take your jacket off, please? It's not good enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He does not say that. Jesus does not say that, by the way. What he does say is this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, you got some scars there. Yeah, that's kind of ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see some hurt. I see some bitterness. I see some envy and some pride and some greed. And I see some sin. Oh, man, you've been through some things, haven't you? you yeah, you've been hurt by some people. Hmm. You got some addictions? I, I. Come on. You ask me, here you go. Put on this new garment. Oh, yeah, get your arm in there. Hang on. Don't rip my jacket, please. Hang on. Put your arm. Yeah, crunch it up. Oh, sorry. It doesn't, it's not that hard with Jesus, okay? I'm imperfect. I, I'm, we're, we're but men, mere mortal men. About knocked him out with the microphone too. 
doesn't he look good, y'all? Doesn't he look good? Come on. That actually works. Yeah, you can't have it. Sorry. Again, I'm not God. You know what he's saying? I see you. It don't matter to me. Because I've already paid the price. So here's a new robe. Here's a new garment. It's one of righteousness. It doesn't mean he won't ever mess up. It doesn't mean he'll never make a, sta- a mistake. But what others see is a robe of righteousness. What others will see from that point on is what, what Christ has put upon you. Come on, somebody in this house. Do you know what I'm talking about today? We've all come in here imperfect. We've all come in here with mistakes. We've all come in here carrying junk and mess. But he wants to put on his garment upon our lives. He takes what's messed up and he makes it right. He makes it perfect. He makes it look good. You still don't believe me? Go study the good book and look at every disciple he ever called. A bunch of misfits, a bunch of mess ups. And he called them to walk closely with him and to be endowed with power to fulfill his plan. I'm telling you today, you don't have to be perfect. He'll make you perfect to fulfill his will and accomplish his plan. Stand with me. Anybody believe what I'm talking about today? (laughs) Put on, let him put on you. Oh, I feel the spirit of God moving right now. Somebody's coming to this place hurting. You've come to this place broken and ashamed. You've come to this place saying, I don't deserve it. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even feel like lifting my eye. I'm ashamed. I can't even. Why? Why should why am I here? Why am I? I don't deserve this. You hear this preacher today. He wants to take his garment of righteousness and put it upon your life to let you know you don't have to be perfect. He'll take whatever you have to give him and he'll make it right. When I came into the church, he took my sins on him. He put his righteousness on me. And I found the perfect church. It's his church. I didn't fit in, but he helped me fit in. No, I'm looking at faces today, and I can't help but smile because you and I were imperfect. You've walked in with stories and things that have happened in your past. I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing is what God has put on you. Come on. Some of you are living under shame and guilt and condemnation, but he wants to break it off of your life today for good because what he sees is his garment of righteousness. What others see is not what you think they see. So quit hanging your head. Quit walking around in life dejected, feeling like you have nothing to offer the world. He has saved you for a reason. He has healed you for a reason. He has delivered you for a reason. wasn't worthy no but he's made me worthy I didn't deserve it but he gave me mercy anyway now I'm in the perfect church it's a glorious church no spot no wrinkle no such thing one day that church will stand before him Revelation 7 9 this is a prophetic book in the word of God after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues there's no prejudice in heaven there will be no prejudice in heaven there should not be any prejudice in the body there's no prejudice in heaven Every nation, every tribe, every kindred, every tongue, every people will be standing together as a perfect church, worshiping the perfect God. As we stand before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in, say it, 
white robes, new garments. <laughs> and palms in their hands. And you know what we're going to be doing? Holy. Holy. Lord God. We're going to be worshiping the perfect God. Can you see them? Can you see that? Will you close your eyes right now? And I want you to envision that with me. That mighty church on that last day standing together Woo! every tribe every nation all kinds of kindreds more than one man could number every time standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with a new garment with white robes perfect church Woo! no spot no blemish no wrinkle, no such thing. No more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache, no more addictions. No. Standing around the throne, worshiping together. Oh yes, you have found the perfect church. It's not our church, it's his church. You can't join it by filling out a membership card, but you can be a part of it by being born again of water and spirit, repenting before him and saying, forgive me, I'm here. I surrender my life to following you. Doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect, but it means he'll take that and make something beautiful out of it by giving you his robe of righteousness. Will you join me right now in thanking God for the opportunity He has afforded each and every one of us imperfect people to get to be a part of His perfect church. Will you thank Him right now? Will you go to that time and that moment in your memory when you were broken and lost and destitute? When you were wrecked by sin and addiction. When your life and your family was a mess. But then he found you. Then he took you and put his robe of righteousness upon you. He forgave you. He washed away your sins. He filled you with new life, with hope, with his spirit, with power. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I didn't know who was gonna be in this place, but God did, and he wants you to know you can be a part of 